Hey friends, so in today's video, we are going to cover two of the most useful techniques I have ever learned for spinning poi. I am of course referring to linear isolations as well as linear extensions. Long words, but trust me, uh, these are things that are going to help. Drex here from DrexFactor.com, teaching you poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain during the COVID-19 outbreak. And today, we are talking about straight lines and things that go around them, because of course we are. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So I had been spinning for maybe two years-ish uh, when I took a workshop that really changed the way I look at poi spinning. And it was a workshop that was centered around two different concepts. One of them is what's called a linear isolation, and the other one is what's called a linear extension. For some reason, tech poi heads are absolutely obsessed with three-syllable words. Um, really what these are is they're just different ways of making the poi move around your hand as your hand is going back and forth in a straight line. But these are also the two most useful tools for poi spinning that I have ever picked up in my entire career. So today we're going to dive into them and especially some of the useful things that they open up for you. So I'm actually going to start this off by talking about linear extensions. Um, so again, poi spinners are kind of obsessed with jargon. And this thing I'm doing right here, of just spinning a single poi in a wall plane in front of me and everything, we would refer to as a static spin. Um, I don't know why, but that's the name that has stuck for this. Uh, a static spin is more or less one of the simplest things that you can do with poi, but it's not hard to turn that into something that is a little bit more involved, but that opens up the doors to a lot of other things. So the first thing that I want you to do as you're playing around with your static spin here um, is that I want you to have your hand move up and down in a straight line. That is, um, when the poi is moving up, your hand is moving up. When the poi is moving down, your hand is moving down. You're kind of bouncing the poi and hands up and down together in a straight line, yeah? And you can do this either just like in a little line in front of you or like try and reach the entire length of your upper body, that's totally up to you. Mainly just what I want you to have is this rhythm of moving your hand back and forth in a straight line and having the poi trace out something like an ellipse around it, yeah? So we would refer to this as being a linear extension. Um, that is, it's basically the same thing that happens when we're doing an extension of just like having the poi being extension of our hand, except that instead of our hand working in a circle, it's just working in a straight line. It's going linear, but the poi is still doing what it would be doing in an extension. Hence, linear extension. And seriously, don't worry about the jargon. I would much rather you focus on just the movement. So there's no pop quiz coming on this and you're not going to have to spell either word. Okay, so now let's play around with a linear extension that switches off which dimension we happen to be moving our hand back and forth in. Just as we can move our hands up and down, we can also move our hand side to side. This one feels a little bit weirder because there are some places where it feels like we're working against gravity, but let's still try and work with it. So the key here is to think that as the poi is traveling underneath your hand, you're kind of dragging it, and then you're going to give it a little flick. I actually have my index finger uh, wrapped just underneath the tether here, and I'm giving it just a little push to get it over my hand, and the poi and my hand are kind of in a race to get back to the other side. I'm spinning my poi clockwise, so for me it is I'm dragging the poi underneath to my left and popping it over as I'm heading back to the right. Dragging it to the left, popping it over to the right. Dragging it to the left, popping it over to the right. Drag and pop, drag and pop. See if you can get it to the point where you can just have your hand go straight back and forth. Once again, just kind of creating an ellipse as your hand goes straight back and forth in a straight line. Cool, so with our vertical linear extension and our horizontal linear extension, we can now put together a shape that's made of these straight lines. Um, I want you to visualize a box in front of you. It's got a straight line going from left to right, from uh, bottom to top, from right to left, and from top to bottom, yeah? So without the poi in your hand, think you start over here at bottom left and you're thinking right, up, left, down. Right, up, 
left, down, right, up, left, down. I actually want you to physically move your hand as you're doing this and say each of the points. Saying right, up, left, down, right, up, left, down down, just to get it down in whatever form of memory you're depositing it in, yeah? Cool, so now let's do that with the poi. Start the poi down here by your left hip, and you're gonna be thinking, okay, right, up, left, down, right, up, left, down, right, up, left, down. You're still using all of those same linear extensions that you were just a second ago. You're just chaining them together into a shape. And this shape happens to be what we would call a box mode four pedal anti-spin flowers. Because again, poi spinners and three syllable words, am I right? <laughs> Now we're gonna be playing around a whole bunch more with anti-spin flowers in the coming weeks. Uh, almost none of them are gonna be box mode though. This was just to give you a quick shape that you could put together with these linear extensions because they turn out to be incredibly useful. Uh, you can also use them for piecing together like say triangles or uh, pentagrams, for example. Um, there's a lot of possibilities here. If you can draw it with straight lines, you can draw it with linear extensions. I actually did an entire series back in the day where I used some computer animations to kind of visualize and help people realize all the shapes that they could put together with linear extensions. So I will go ahead and link to that down in the description so you can go check it out if you want some further learning here, yeah? Cool, so next up, we're gonna play around with linear isolations. Uh, these are incredibly helpful for learning anti-spin flowers as well as body tracers. Um, I've even found applications for them in some two-poi, one-hand tricks and everything. So to be perfectly frank with you, I feel like they're almost like a Swiss army knife of poi tricks. Okay, so let's talk about how linear isolations are done. And the basic conceit here is that you're taking the idea that we've been playing with, with our stalls, that is having the poi come to the end of a linear path and then having them come back the other way and we're kind of breaking one of the rules. That is, rather than having our poi just come to a stop and our hand pulling back the other way, we're actually gonna have our hand keep on going. So we had that moment that looks like a stall, but with the hand keeping on going and everything, it maintains the direction that the poi is turning. It's kind of like a fake stall, if that makes sense. So let's try putting that together. Um, I want you to start with your hand over to your left hand side and the poi spinning clockwise. And I want you to go ahead and drop the poi down your center line. You can visualize this as a down stall, or you can just think that you're dropping the poi and your hand is getting pulled along out to your center line as well. Either which way, you stop the poi. Now, here's where the twist happens. You can pull the poi back out of this. Usually, we pull it back the other way we just came from. Now, we're gonna pull it the opposite way. So think that you're doing the stall and rather than having your hand go back where it came from, it's now continuing on its trip over to the right-hand side. We drop the poi down our center line and our hand continues out to our right-hand side. We should have something that looks kind of like a stall in the middle. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with an up stall. That is, I'm gonna try and stall my poi up on my center line and my hand is just gonna sneak underneath it. Let me show you that again. I pop the poi up and my hand sneaks underneath it. It's really, really, really important to realize that uh, you want the poi to kind of hover in midair for a second and it's your hand's job to sneak past it over to the left-hand side of you. So let's put those two things together. We're gonna drop the poi down our center line pop it up our center line, drop it down, pop it up, drop it down, pop it up. You basically wanna go straight back and forth between these two points. I sometimes find it's helpful to tell people to kind of like count with this. So think that it's actually like a three downbeat move. You go down, right, left, down, right, left, down, right, left. That point where the poi is popping up, of course, is not a downbeat because the poi is not actually underneath your hand right there. So one of the really cool things you can do with this is a trick called a snake, where you actually wrap the poi around your shoulder every single time that uh, you have one of these stalls, yeah? So for example, I drop the poi behind my shoulder, going out to the right, and I pop it up under my armpit, going to the left. Behind my shoulder to the right, 
behind my armpit to the left, going back and forth. Um, this is one of my very favorite tricks to do simply because it looks so much like uh, the poise interacting with your body in a particularly cool way. Um, you can also do this vertically instead if you want to. And again, I've done tutorials before on how you can use linear isolations in this way that I will link to down in the description if you want to dive in and get further learning on this. Also, hopefully it goes without saying, but in case it doesn't, please learn how to do this with the poise spinning both directions and with both hands, because that's gonna come in handy in the coming weeks, yeah? So let's just take one quick moment to look at all these tricks in slow-mo, yeah? Awesome. So practice those linear isolations and come back tomorrow and we will turn them into anti-spin flowers. Um, in the meantime, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe and help me get the word out about these tutorials to the entire world. And of course, if you are enjoying these videos and you would like to support this project, please consider signing up to support my work over on Patreon, like all these nice folks did. Um, Patreon is what is keeping me afloat through the COVID-19 crisis, and it is what is allowing me to be able to create a video a day for all of you all out there. So, if you have the means to support this project, and I understand if you don't, but if you do, please head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi and sign up. You get early access to all of my content as well as a say in what topics I pursue in the future. Plus, some great behind the scenes stuff. I'm actually in the process of shooting a behind the scenes video as we speak, uh, talking about how I am able to keep up the pace of producing a video every single weekday during the crisis. Uh, so head on over there, please, and thank you. Cool, so tomorrow we dive into the thing that I have been super excited to teach you all now for several weeks, and that is anti-spin flowers. Join me for that tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>